Hello, this is Zachary Deshaux, and I'm here to teach you about what you can find from a graph. The easy way to remember what you can find from a graph is to remember that graphene makes you sad. Sad is an acronym for slope, area, and data. The We'll start with that. I'll go more into what you, I mean by each of these and where they will lead you. We'll start with data. Data is all the points on the graph. For example, a data point would be the x and y values of a graph. Let's take this graph, for example. We know that the x val OK, there we go. For example, a data point here would be this point. So for example, the x and y values would be whatever is in the x-axis versus the y-axis, which means that at, at one second, this object is at one meter. It's pretty straightforward. It's just what's on the graph. It's nothing really extra. Next, we'll cover the slope. The slope of a graph will give you the rate of change of the value of the y-axis in respect to the value of the x-axis. For example, the slope of this, which is a position versus time graph, will give you the rate of change of position with respect to time, otherwise written as delta x over delta t. x is the y-value axis. Uh, t is the x-value axis. The two types of slopes are based off of two types of lines on the graph tangent lines and secant lines. Tangent lines uh, intersect at one point. So for example, here. They, do, they don't intersect at more than one point. And therefore, in this situation, you're, you're taking the derivative at this point right here. This will give you the instantaneous rate of change. In this situation, rather than writing it as delta x over delta t, because it's at a single point and you're taking the derivative over a very small interval of x, or in this situation t, it would be written as dx over dt. Right here, dx, x as the position, the change in y, dt. d just simply means that it's a very small change. A very, it's the slope over a very small change in the distance of y over a very small change in the distance of x. A very small change in the, dist in the distance, or in the position, over a very small change in the time. Just as another rate, just over a small area. The other kind is a secant line. Secant lines are between two points. Sorry, excuse the poor line. So, for example, this line right here is a secant line. Because it, it goes over two points, you're measuring the slope over this interval rather than over a small interval. This will give you the average rate of change over this interval. In this situation, you would write it as delta x over delta t. Or, and this would give you the average velocity over the interval. The difference between this and this is this will give you the average velocity in this specific situation. So v av, whereas this one would give you v instantaneous because it's over such a small it's over such a small portion of time. Now for the area. The area of a graph is an accumulation of change of product. Put simply, it's a way of finding out the accumulation of all the rates over an interval. You can either do this by geometry, if there are standard shapes on the graph, or by integration. All you need to do is integrate the y values with respect to the x values. For this, let's switch to a velocity versus time graph. Here we would take the integral of velocity, v of t, so let's write this out, the integral of v of t with respect to d of t over every small interval. And let's just do it from 
these, by the way, here's the scaling, from 1, sorry, from 0 to 2. So this whole portion right here, so from 0 to 2, all the very small values of dt, all the very small values of t. And this will give you, this would give us the area, or the accumulation of change of product. However, because in this situation it's also geometric, you could use just this triangle formula, one half base times height, which, and that would lead you to the same integral. And in, th in this situation, it would be, the integral would be, oh, when, I'm just going to go with this one because it's going to be the exact same. You're going to have one half times the base, which is two seconds, times the height, which is two meters per second, and it would give you uh, two meters, right there. On uh, so as you can see, you can in, if it is geometric, you can just use geometric shapes and geometric formulas to figure out what it is. Otherwise, you will need to take the integral. However, if you can take both, understand that it won't differ in your results. You will get the exact same thing. On graphs. You will, the slope will always lead you to the derivative of the graph, and area will always lead you to the integral. If you're not sure whether uh, what either the derivative or integral will be, look at the units of y of the y-axis and of the x-axis. If you're deriving, divide the y-axis units by the x-axis units, and you will get the units of the slope. For example, here, what would the slope be? Well, it would be meters sorry, meters per second. So that's the y-axis units divided by the x-axis units per second. That would give you meters per second squared, which is also the units for acceleration. That would lead you to what your the derivative of this graph would be, which would be acceleration. What about the integral? Well, with the integral, multiply the y-axis units by the x-axis units, and you will get the units of the integral. So let's do that. Meters per second times seconds, the seconds cancel out, and you get meters. That's the same units as the position function right here, meters. I hope this video helped, and that you will remember just how much graphing makes you sad.